I'm live in the den with my man Miles and the big fella. We hold it all the way down. <laughs> Wayne's World, man. Appreciate y'all. This young Pentagrass, I'm live in the den with Miles, Wayne, and Big Happy. <laughs> <laughs> we doing this forever, man. <laughs>
a fucking just a pop up. Tricky ain't got a pop up. They go to Tricky ain't parties, and that and that 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 speaks for the quality of the party. The the the, the, the folks that come ain't no bullshit at their party. Ain't never been at their parties where there's been no bullshit. You gonna see and anybody, everybody, that's anybody in the town at, at their parties, man. So I'm gonna let you know. With that being said, that's my co-pilots, Big Happy and Wings World. Y'all wanna add to that monologue? No, I do it right. So where, where, how did Tricky and come about? Uh, where the name come from? Tricky is a childhood saying that I had, um, you know, growing up and where I grew up. Um, just to avoid lion mines. Uh, and that lion mines, yeah, yeah, so I can always be like, uh, Rats, did you go up high? They good? Okay. I always be like, you know, don't do that. That's a tricky situation. Or don't go down there. You know, that's a bad situation. That's tricky. So I just kicked it. It's just, it's just lingo that I use amongst my friends, you know, that we started in the 90s, early 90s. And then, um, you know, when I got together with my boys, we just got everything straight. You got to incorporate so that's tricky, incorporate, that's why you see the ink right there. And uh, <clears throat> that's it, you know what I'm saying, the rest is what it is, what it is. You know? So what, what inspired you to get into the party game? I've been in the party game all my life, right? Uh, my family is a family that always had a band, a fish fry, a party, a cabaret, a fundraiser or something like that. You know, that's my family heritage, you know what I'm saying? So. That's what we always did. That's like natural stuff for me. And then, you know, I go to the cabaret scene, sell that out. You know, really outgrew that, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, and then I give it the great curbone, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, we collab and then teaching and learning and all that good stuff. The rest of it is what it is. So that's one of the pictures privy that you learned from as far as how to really throw a big party. Do Kirk Moore throwing those big parties? Hmm. Well, we both, I, I learned a lot from Kirk. Mm -hmm. But we learned together too. I right? understand. Because we were doing it in real time. Right. 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 Um, my gift that I learned from Kirk was just how to handle people. Right. right? It always was going to be something going to go, this going to happen, blah, blah, blah. You know, just stay calm, we're gonna get through. That's Kirk. Uh, as far as the big parties, as they was going for him, they was going for me, you know what I'm saying? Cause okay, he, okay. he was driving the bus, but I was, I was privy to see it all. Gotcha. And then when I looked at Tricky, uh, before I got it up and popping, you know, I almost had a cheat sheet because I got a chance to see Madness. Mm -hmm. I got a chance to see Squazzy. Right. Um, the great Mark Barnes, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody throw these mega parties. And, um, you know, I used it the same way that I use my terms in life. Um, I always look at what people do wrong and say I ain't doing it, right? So I learned that, you know, what they was doing wrong, you know, I could just see whether it's from security breaches or a lighting on the stage or whatever, right, that I learned from it. And then by the time I got my own stage, I was ready. The other two partners, how did you all come to the collaboration of even starting. Who are the game partners? Who are the two partners? Mm -hmm. uh, right. Raynard and I forgot the other young man. Kurt. Kurt. Kurt, Kurt Walker. Walker. Raynard. Yeah, Kurt Walker and my man uh, Raynard. Good dudes. Fireman. Yeah. yeah, good fireman yeah. dude. Um, me and Ray, uh, <clears throat> we did properties. We did real estate together. Okay. Um, bought a building over there in Southeast um, on Oak Street. And, uh, you know, we was just doing stuff, you know, just business-wise. And at that time, I was done with parties. I was doing my mortgage company. Okay. And, uh, you know, he just, just bugging the shit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> he's had parties and I used to take the pictures, do the photography. You know, I was so in the picture a lot of those yeah. events. Yep. Yeah. So I'm a photographer, you know what I'm saying? I've been a photographer since college. I always, you know, that's a love. And then I got in there. That was another cheat sheet. Because, Definitely. Because <laughs> you're in there and you're seeing everything that's happening. So now I go to a wedding, I see everything that's happening. Oh, they talking about their meatballs. Okay. They talking about the macaroni and cheese. This wedding don't got no love, and I can see that. <laughs> <clears throat> so I always just capitalize off those uh, gifts that I had when I was around people. And uh, this always been a kid that's going to pay attention. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I just feel like you learn from every situation. Yeah. 
So that's where that came from. So Ray got big, Curtis his best friend. Oh, All right. Okay. You know. And he said, man, I'm coming, man. You know, we're gonna break down however you wanna break down, you know what I'm saying? But we can do this. And he had some mocks, he had big cookouts and stuff on Kenilworth Avenue. You know, he never was making no money, but he knew how to handle people, people yes. right? And um, with Tricky Entertainment, I just grabbed a couple guys that was my dudes that knew how to handle people too. Like Bink, right? Bink from over Southeast with y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my man, Herc Scott. <laughs> These are the friends that I met just taking pictures. You okay. know what I'm saying, back in the day. Yeah. So they already knew me and I knew that they could handle people. Even on a small scale, they can handle people, right? I said, man, come on on the team. You know, we just created what we call the Trick Game family. You know, 20 years you know, later, we never had no honor miss about finances or nothing like that. We just come together for a common goal, and that's just to make things work. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that works. I, I, I got to give it to you. <coughs> I always te I tease them guys, but you, when you're doing shit on the level you're doing it on, because your guys, y'all, if something was going on at Merriweather, if something was going on in Philly, man, I, I ain't never think motherfucker go to Philly and push no flies. Mm -hmm. But your your guys went everywhere. Y'all y'all team was magnificent. And you gotta have that. You gotta have a good good team. You gotta have that that guys that play their role. You were the financial backer with you Ray Sugar Ray and and and, and Kurt Walker. And these other guys, like you say, they got to play their role mm -hmm. to make that common goal work. And y'all, I, I, I think y'all were the first people that I knew of that was bringing people in from out of town. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about they going to a goddamn <clears throat> tricky ink, they going to tricky ink party. They coming to Nat Stadium. They right. going to Subtle Breed. They going to the uh, uh, Wine and Cigar Festival. Right. That's 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 on my list this year. I always. Yeah, something always was fucked up with me, whether it was my feet or something like that. Me and wife be coming to the wine festival. Got gotcha, you, man. In the world. Like when, when, when did you? When was your first party? And then when when you did that party, you know, I, I do parties on a smaller scale, but I'm a people's person, and my my thing was the crowd is cool because I do parties for me, but I always wanted to hear feedback. You know, I always jump on social media the next day. Even after y'all parties. Mm -hmm. the, the all positive to see what the crowd is saying. Right. Always good, can't please everybody. No. Somebody always have, and I can say, out of the times I did go on you, and, and after y'all parties, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't many negatives. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you always was on, came online and you ain't no social media guy. Right. But you address the issues that the people had. Right. And I like your approach. And it wasn't arrogance, but you always told me, Miles, if 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 two people don't come because of a, a, a misunderstanding or whatever, mm -hmm. five more gonna come, you know, to yeah, see what to see what's happening. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? We used to always have these conversations mm -hmm. so when you decided to do a party and then that, because like you said, cabarets, definitely I grew that. Yeah. To, to do it on the scale that you're doing it on now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that once, a, I, I traveled a lot, right? Mm -hmm. We got to my man Sherman D. <laughs> Sherman Doug. Yeah, Doug, you know, we flying all over the place. So the advantage that I had from the other party promoters is that I got to party in every city. Houston, Philly, um, Dallas, Westside, Al Cali, Magic Johnson Retirement Party, you know. Oh, the first all white party at the Hamptons with um, Puffy and um, and uh, uh, my man um, LL and all of them was in there. So I got a chance to see other cities operate, right? <clears throat> I'm DC all day, right? Man, the road finders ain't no hiccups about it, you would know it if you're around me for five seconds, right? It's just how I feel no matter where I am a reference, right? And I always said that I want to give them a chance to come see my city, right? Because I think my city is shit. I just how I feel. 
They were the coolest niggas. I always thought we had the baddest girls, right? We ain't bad as we can't fuck with Houston though. No, you can say what you want here. Oh, we can't fuck with Houston. But Oh yeah, Houston. Yeah, yeah but yeah, we Houston. always thought we had the baddest girls, yeah. you know what I'm saying? In in Washington, <laughs> DC. And and just some cool dudes. But we so laid back, you know, we not New Yorkish, we not this, that. So they gotta come to really see the moxie of our city. So my goal was to go to other cities and coerce them to come back to my city for entertainment, right? And if you look at it, when I first used to do the Summer Breeze, I draw my national artists and never draw my go-go artists, right? Yeah. Because most of them was turned off by go-go because they not from here. So I'll wait till they buy their tickets first. And then I say, breaking news, team familiar in the building, mm -hmm. right? So now that they get to feel it, feel the ground move, Feel the beat, see the capital over there, the monument, everybody looking good, now they want to come back. So that's how we built that. Yeah. Let me ask you this, talk, uh, you've been, you done throwing events in the Anthem, that Stadium, Love, uh, uh, the Convention Center. Top three tricky events ever in these 20 years. Tricky events, uh, that's tough. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Right? Mm -hmm. um, my favorite was going to be 2014. And after that, to add on the ones that didn't go so swell. Yeah, the ones that, that you thought so well. you should have did better on. Right. You know, it was always ups and downs in this year. It's always ups and downs. You're yeah. correct. You said uh, 2014? 2014, Black Alley, Chris Sam Michelle, special guest James Funk. Right? Fight. Where was this at? That's at the convention that center. Okay. 5,600 people, right? Everybody fly, fur coats, all the girls have them in pretty furs. <laughs> Stuff like that, man. You know, all my dudes, you know, doing their thing. And that just was like uh, one of my favorite, favorite parties. Um, that summer breeze with Tamilia, Team Familia. Um, and uh, I've got a Black Alley again. Uh, that's definitely right up there, you know, in the top. And then I'm gonna leave both of those parties on the shelf. And uh, that wine festival coming off the pandemic, um, not last year, the year yeah, before that. Before. I was in St. Charles County. Uh, we had over 11,000, yeah, 10,800 people for two days. And that was a good wine festival, but it was also good music too. Mm -hmm. So that was, the, if you want to give me my top three, that's my top three, right? Uh, if you talk about some disappointments, uh, <clears throat> I had to get creative uh, to deal with uh, backyard um, because I'm a backyard fan. Yeah, because speaking of backyard, because G was just on Instagram screaming and shouting and stomping that back y'all don't get invited to, to, to these parties, the Tricky Ink parties and the, the you know, the all white parties, the pink parties, mm -hmm. this, that, and the third. And then and, and you, you gotta, you gotta understand what you bring to the table. Right. With, right. with that, but go ahead and speak, go ahead. I seen that um, from G, you know what I'm saying? Good friend of mine, you know, I, I would think that if he had any problems, he'd give me a call, but, uh, we had them at the black party, mm -hmm. right? Um, we paid them what they wanted to get paid because I seen that was one of his issues. But we didn't promote them, right. you know, as a you know, as a special guest band I remember that. from DC, right? Um, it affected the numbers because all the other bands we were able to to promote. We couldn't promote them, right? Not because of their music, because they could play with anybody or just as best, as good as anybody. But just the environment. You know what I'm saying? It's the weed smoke, this and that, blah, blah, blah. I got a lot of people that don't really care for that environment that been following me for 15, 20 years, right? So, um, you know, just like with everybody else, in business, you're going to cater to your audience. Right. Right, if that's not my audience, that's not my audience. But at the same token, I always try to look out for backyard. You know, they've been on the Spirit Fest twice, right? Uh, you know, with my man Daryl Brooks, you know, I, I, I want to say that I played the intro part in that. Oh, Daryl. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just making sure that they co-signed on that. 
And then, like I said, I took a chance, put him on the black party with us. I got some emails that wasn't that, that I wasn't that fond of, but you know, I mean, you know, we like the music, we like the band. We from DC, so we got to DC to the fullest, so that's what we was at with. But also before the black party, you had a Summer Breeze with Belladonna featuring Big G. I brought Big G up as a special guest twice. I bought G and Winxie as a special guest at the Wine Festival, right? Well, you know, for my promoters, the special guest them is easy to do. Right. Right? Because they're good and they know what they're doing and they're from the city. Put them on that fly and deal with the backyard again, that's all different. Right? Not saying that my nieces go see them, my nephews, my little brother, everybody go see backyard in my whole family, right? It just sometimes that crowd don't mix with what I'm trying to do. And, I, and, and G got to understand that, the business, on the business side of that, because you and I used to talk, and we, and that was, you know, you always kept 1,000 with me with the special guest part. You mm -hmm. couldn't, couldn't promote them because blah, blah, and, and, and But pay them top dollar, whatever they have. Yeah. So and I, and I get yeah, G's sure. point that they want to be on the flyer. I mean, well, Want to get the pull, but like you said, uh, yeah, I thought, uh, yeah, you, I, th I thought you gave everybody a shot yeah. on the on the go go scene. Even the venues right. that you had didn't really want no nope. go go promoted. They didn't want, and you did it on the sneak tip. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like I say, we didn't talk. You did it on the sneak tip, snuck them in there. Wherever it's vibe, they don't give a shit who it was. Right. If it was go-go, it was a problem. But you found a way to slide them in there and then to, to prove to the folks, hey, this, is, this ain't what you, this ain't what you, exactly. you know. And then you had to sell them on it. I had to sell them on it. I had to come in there, right? I had to tell them that I got to me or whoever I got, my national artist. And then I'm gonna have some local artists later right, on. Right. And sign my whole contract, right. get everything going, right? And then break out whoever it was gonna be. Right. Be you or who, whoever I had, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's just like uh just basically just you know, just just being in the heart of my city and feeling how I'm gonna feel about it. You know, I feel like, you know, I got certain obligations to take care of certain people, you know, and that's what I did, you know. <clears throat> We're good. Huh? Not cool. Break. All right, we're going to uh, take a quick pause for the calls. Be right back live in the den with Tricky Entertainment CEO, Black Pentagrass. Yes, indeed. Live! <laughs>